Okay, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome to this evening's class. My name is Leroy Phillips, and I will be your presenter this evening. This evening, we'll be doing sniper entries, okay? So we'll be looking for sniper entries using the UOP FX Trade Finder. Have any one of you guys used the Trade Finder before? You just see the chat box. Okay, I see Nope's coming through. I see Kevin says yes. I see Ada says yes. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. All right. Now, some of you may not know, but the UOPFX Trade Finder is indeed a very, very powerful tool. Okay. Now, it's powerful because it uses many different pattern formations. You have uh, harmonic pattern formations. You have head and shoulders formations. If I'm to go through, let's go in the settings. You can see you have so many different harmonic pattern formations. You have the wedge formation, the double top formation, the double bottom, you have the triangle. Here's the head and shoulders. You have the triple bottom, the cup and handle. You even have the software looking for ranges for you. Okay. Now, many of these formations make up the main aspects of price action. Okay. So what I'm going to try to show you guys throughout uh, this course is how to incorporate different aspects of the market to find sniper entries whilst utilizing the trade finder tool, mainly to find some sort of setup in the market. Okay, so whether you want to look at harmonic patterns or you want to look at uh, traditional patterns like double tops, wedges, triple bottoms, triple tops, cup and handle, that type of stuff, we will find ways to get sniper entries so that you can make the best use of these tools, okay? Now, take a look at the disclaimer. Remember that we here at UOPFX are not financial advisors. Everything we do here is for educational purposes, okay? So just take a moment to go through the disclaimer. You can also find uh, the disclaimer on our website. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Now, one of the first things that I want to show you guys is the Elliott wave concept. Now, the Elliott wave concept is, it's simply based off of a five wave impulse followed by a three wave correction. Now, if you look at this diagram that I have here, you can see it shows one, two, three, four, five, then you get A, B, C. So this is what a cycle looks like. This is what a price cycle looks like. Now, you can find these price cycles in many different time frames. Now, it all depends on how the price is moving because you may find price giving you these um, patterns in a very defined way on a higher time frame, like let's say maybe the four hour time frame. And uh, in some cases, based on the instrument, it could be on the one hour time frame. And when I say more defined, I mean it would not be very messy. It would be very clean in some cases. Now, especially in the Forex market, the Forex market is a market that is very corrective, meaning it's a bit messy. It's not always very clean. So in a lot of cases, you would find a lot of the uh, corrective formations in the market. 
Okay, now even in the corrective side of the market, for example, you can see here it says ABC, which is more of the corrective side of the market, you will still find in this A wave, it could still be a five wave move looking similar to this one right here. And then you get a three wave move between A and B, and then from B to C, you could get another five wave move. Okay, so the market is built off of impulse waves and it's built off of corrective waves now there are many corrective waves okay there are not many different types of impulse waves but there are many corrective waves so it's very easy to identify an impulse wave to identify a corrective wave may be a little bit more difficult so if we look at these corrective wave patterns that i created here for you guys you can see that we have what we, most of us would know this one, it's the ABCD pattern, also known as the zigzag. Okay, so you just simply get a five wave move down, a three wave move up, then you get another five wave move down. Now, typically, whenever this pattern completes, you will see the price continue to the upside. So you can see here, this up arrow is pointing to the upside. So that means the price was moving up, and then you get a three wave correction, the price continues moving up after that correction is complete. Okay, so it goes impulse, correction, impulse. Okay. Let me just take a look at the chat box. Let me see if anyone has any questions so far. Everyone clear so far? Don't be afraid to drop your questions in the chat box. I'll be more than happy to offer clarification. I know for some, for some uh, students, they find that the Elliott wave theory is very difficult, but I'm gonna do my best to try to simplify it for you as much as possible, okay? All right, okay. So this is the ABC pattern, or right, I see a message is coming through let's see here all right uh, grace said great okay no problem <laughs> okay so this is the abcd pattern also known as the zigzag now this one is very similar to the abcd pattern okay this one is the a b c now with the abc okay excuse my my c here it, it got lost <laughs> so with the ABC pattern, you can see here that it is also a three wave pattern formation. Okay, now it is also built with a five wave move, then you get a three wave move. However, with the ABC pattern, in some cases, one of the waves could be three waves. And also one of the waves could be short, whilst the other is long. Okay, so you could have your A wave being long, and then you have your three wave B, and then you have a short wave creating the C wave. Okay, or you can have another three wave creating the C wave. Now, the next pattern that we're going to look at is we refer to this one as the WXY. Now, the WXY is more of a corrective pattern formation. Now, when I say it's more of a corrective pattern formation, what I mean is it moves in three waves. So you have three waves down, three waves up, three waves down, and that completes a WXY formation on its own. Then you have three ways up, three ways down, three ways up. That's another W, X, Y formation. And then you have three ways down, three ways up, three ways down. That's another W, X, Y formation. Okay, so it's more of a combination pattern formation where you have many corrective patterns. You would find this mainly in a range where the market is just going sideways, okay? And typically, as you can see here, if the market was moving up, then this will be the correction of that 
impulse to the upside. Then the market continues moving to the upside again. Over here, you can see what we call a WXYXZ formation. Now, this is basically the same WXY, but instead of the price continuing up after Y completes, you get another corrective wave, and then you get another three wave correction to the downside before the price continues moving up. Now, in some cases, this type of correction can become very extended and it just goes sideways for a long period of time. Okay, now there's no telling how long it can go sideways for. It can just continue going sideways, creating WXYXZ, WXYXZ, and just developing like that. In some cases, you can consider this to be a range where the market is just ranging, just going sideways. Now we do have some markets that trade like that, where it just goes sideways most of the time. Okay. Now we have the more complex types of patterns like the leading diagonal. Now the leading diagonal is, it's very similar to a triangle formation. Some traders want to call it a wedge pattern. Now I've seen a lot of traders um, chart a wedge pattern. And in a lot of cases, it does not have five waves. Okay. In some cases, they may chart a wedge pattern with just one, two, three waves inside of it. Okay. But generally, this is called a leading diagonal pattern formation, and it consists of five waves. Okay. In some cases, you can have maybe the first wave being a five wave formation, but the rest are built using three wave pattern formations. Okay. When the pattern is complete, it will continue the trend to the downside. If the trend was down, if the trend was up, it will continue the trend to the upside. Okay. For example, this was a downtrend and you can see here, this leading diagonal continued the trend to the downside. Inside of this leading diagonal, you will find five waves. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Then it would make another correction and continue to the downside. Okay. Inside this one, it's also a downtrend. And you can see here, it makes five waves down and it turns to the upside. So in a lot of cases, you can see this pattern turn into a ending formation, which means it ends the move to the downside and the price starts to move back to the upside. In some cases, it could be a continuation pattern formation. Okay, so you have the leading diagonal and you have the ending diagonal. Now, let's just jump all the way over here to the flat pattern formations. Now, the flat pattern formations are also three wave pattern formations. It's built off of A, B, C, or A, B, C, D pattern formations that just go flat. And they also occur in what we like to call sometimes a flag pattern formation. That's where you see the price just go, you get, an, you get a strong move up or a strong move down, and then the price just goes sideways, and then it continues moving down with the trend or if the trend was up, it continues moving up with the trend. Now, the flat pattern formation is where you get the trend moving to the upside. So you have the strong impulse up, you have the pullback. The price retest the top, but does not break it. Then it comes down, retest the bottom, but does not break it. And then it continues to the upside. So that's why we call it a flat pattern formation. It does not break the high, it does not break the low. Okay. Now we have what we call a running flat formation, typical, basically similar to the flat pattern formation. However, in this case, you would have, let's look at this one here, which is an example of an uptrend. You have price moving up, you have a three wave pullback, you have price pushing up most likely in another three wave pull, uh, push to the upside. Then you have another three wave pullback to the downside and price 
pushes up again. However, the price breaks the high, but does not break the low, okay? Before it continues in the direction of the trend. And we call this one a running flat formation. It could also be in a situation where the price does not break the high in an uptrend, but it breaks the low and then continues to the upside. So you could see this one unfold in, in two different ways. Scenario one, it breaks the high, but does not break the low. Scenario two, it breaks the low, but does not break the high and continues moving back to the upside when the uh, C wave is complete, okay? So it can be, it can be created using just you can look at this as A, B, C, or you can look at this as A, B, C, D, okay? So you can look at it in different ways. The main thing is that it needs to be a corrective formation, okay? So whether it's a W, X, Y creating this flat pattern or it's an A, B, C, D creating this flat pattern, it does not really matter, okay? We just need to be able to identify what a correction is and what an impulse is okay so whenever the price is going into correction it will be after an impulse wave so it must go into correction after a strong move so basically what we do is we look for strong moves in the market and then we look for when the market creates a correction to that strong move whether the strong move was up or the strong move was down, all right? So here we have the expanding, the expanding flat formation. This is where the price comes, breaks the top, breaks the bottom, and then continues to the upside. It could also be a bearish pattern formation where the trend is down. It comes, creates a low, bounces up, creates a high, comes down, creates another low. In that scenario, it would break the low and break the high before moving down, okay? This one is a triangle formation. Now, everyone basically knows what a triangle formation is. It's self-explanatory and as you can see, it is shaped like a triangle. Now, in a triangle, we do not generally see a overshoot of the triangle, meaning that you don't see the price breaking outside of the triangle shape. It is generally very clean, okay? If you're having a situation where you have price breaking outside, like maybe wicking outside of the triangle, then in a lot of cases that would be considered a um, diagonal formation, okay? It could be considered a diagonal formation in a case like that, or some sort of wedge formation. But typically the triangle formation is very clean and it consists of five waves inside of that triangle formation. The internal waves are five waves, okay? So we generally count it as A, B, C, D, E, or you can count it as one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Any questions so far? Let's go to the chat box. Let's see if anyone has any questions. Have you guys come across any of these patterns as yet? Okay, let me see. Um, Kevin says, yes, seen them. Ada says, is it easy to mark the patterns on TradingView? Yes, TradingView has many, many tools that would allow you to outline these patterns. And I'll, I'll show you guys what they look like. Okay. Okay, so 
Let's move over to the UOPFX Trade Finder. All right, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull up any. Let's try to make sure that we have one that is. Let's use this one. All right, so this one is a harmonic pattern. It's actually a cipher, and. Uh, what are we looking for? If we look at the harmonic pattern itself, we can see that it has a strong move. X to A is a very strong move. And then it goes into a correction, meaning it goes sideways. Now, if I'm just going to use this line here, you can see that the price is going sideways. It is sideways, okay? Now, after an impulse wave, which is a strong move, now we can look at this strong move and consider it to be one, two, three, four, five, okay? Because typically, when the price moves one, two, three, four, five, it is a strong move that is in the market. It's called an impulse wave because it moves very fast and aggressive, okay? So with this, you can see one, two, three, four, five, okay? And then the price goes into correction, all right? If you look at it carefully, one, two, three, four, five so you have push down pull back push down pull back push down that's five impulses to the downside that's five waves to the downside okay now you have price pulling back the price starts to pull back you get one two three now speaking of the tools that we have available here you can see we have we have the X, A, B, C, D pattern. We have the cipher pattern. We have the A, B, C, D pattern. We have three drive pattern. We have the head and shoulders pattern. We have the Elliott wave pattern in here as well. We have the Elliott wave triangle pattern in here as well. We have the uh, combo pattern that I just told you guys about, the W, X, Y, X, Z pattern. You have the ABC pattern in here. You have the WXY pattern in here as well, okay? These are some of the main patterns that you will find in the market, okay? Now, let us use, let's use the WXY pattern, okay? So if I look at this here as W, right? And I look at this here as x and i'm looking at this as one two three so this would be my y we just make this line a little thicker i'll change the color okay so this is w x and y now this would make a complete corrective formation okay now in some cases, this could be a completely different pattern, right? But another thing that I like to use is market geometry. That's what I call it. I call it market geometry where I measure the waves because the market also moves in measured moves. So I could measure this wave, this first impulse, measure it, and I can bring it over to the end of the correction to have an idea if this wave is what's repeating itself over here, okay? Because typically you will find wave one in a three wave move being the same length as wave three, okay? And why is that? Because it could be a A, B, C, D pattern. If it's not an A, B, C, D pattern, it could be an A, B, C pattern which you can have one leg being long, the next leg being short, okay? So 
I would use these pattern formations to give me an idea so I would know which type of pattern I may be looking at because I know if, if it's an equal length wave, then it's most likely AB equals CD, okay? So in this case, you can see here, this is a one, two, three wave pattern formation. Now, this shows you that the harmonic pattern is also built off of these wave patterns that the Elliott wave theory outlines, okay? So the Elliott wave theory is the foundation of price action. The way in which the price moves, it moves in waves, and the Elliott wave theory has been able to outline these different waves in the market. So just to simplify the whole process, what we will look for is just just look for a strong move in the market. And once you get a strong move in the market, what are you gonna expect after? You're gonna expect a weaker move in the market, something going sideways, something corrective, something that's gonna give you three waves. And how can we identify three waves easily? We look for a pullback, we look for a correction of that pullback and another push in the direction of that pullback. Once it gives you one, two, three, your correction is over. And you can start looking for the continuation of the trend, which will be to the downside in the direction of the previous impulse. Okay? Any questions? Let me know that you're following with me, guys. Okay, I see here. Uh, uh, Mark says knowingly no, but uh, I'm sure I've missed it many times. <laughs> yes, I mean, the markets, it may, when you look at your chart, it may just look very confusing to a lot of new traders, but really it's very simple. It's just a matter of understanding what you're looking at. Once you can put into your mind that I'm looking at an impulse or I'm looking at a correction, everything just starts to become way simple. You just need, the easiest way is to identify the impulse. Just look for a strong move in the market, okay? I see Daniel says, how about the correction to the upside from C point? Let's look at that. So Daniel is talking about the push to the upside from the C point. Now, with me looking at this push from the C point to the upside, as you can see, it's strong. It's a strong wave, right? Now, let me just remove this. This wave to the downside could also be let me just, since it's not a measured move, as you can see here, it's not a measured move. So this wave could also be something that looks like this. I should probably use the ABC for this one. Let's use the ABC. There you go. You get a short wave. You get a three wave, one, two, three, three wave correction, and then you get a long wave. Right? So this could be a correction and this could be a small impulse, right? So this is a strong push to the upside and then you get a three wave correction. It's clear to see this is three waves coming down here, one, two, three. As you can see, it is one, two, three. So this is clear as a three wave move. This is also clear one, two, three as a three wave move. And then you're getting another strong push to the downside. I see someone sending in a message, let's see. All right, uh, Tanya says, how do you tell the difference between a wave and a correction? They're all waves. 
okay? So they're all waves. The impulse is also a wave. The correction is also a wave, okay? So it's just the structure that you're looking at. The impulse is strong. The correction is weak. So the impulse would be made of bigger candles, whilst the correction would be made of smaller candles, okay? Now, a corrective wave could also have impulse waves inside of it because a correction could be made of an impulse, a correction, and another impulse. But it's going to be smaller than the main impulse, which is in the direction of the trend, okay? Remember, the market is just a repetition of pattern formations. The market is very fractal in nature, which means it's the same pattern formations repeating themselves over and over again to create bigger pattern formations, creating price action. Okay, that's why when you go to a higher time frame, you will see the same pattern. It'll just be bigger. You go to a lower time frame, you find the same pattern, it's just smaller. Okay, Tanya says, okay, thank you. All right, Bella is asking, what role does the RSI play? Okay, I'll get to that one. And I know, I know that most traders look at the RSI using a period of 14. I don't look at the RSI with a period of 14, okay? In my view, looking at the RSI with a period of 14, is, it's more for when you're trading um, like swing trading. It's not really for day trading. When you're day trading, you need to look at the RSI using a smaller period. Okay, and I'll show you guys how I look at the RSI. All right, let's go back. Okay. Okay, Bella says, thank you. You're most welcome, Bella. <laughs> All right, so this could be a three wave ABC correction. And we could also be looking at what we call a flat pattern formation. Let me just try to make this thicker and let's change the color. Let's use green, lime green. And let's make this thicker and use lime green here as well. Okay. So this could just be a flat pattern formation. And what kind of flat pattern formation would we consider this to be? This would be one wave up, one wave down, breaking the low. The next wave comes up, breaks the high. So can someone tell me what type of pattern formation this looks like? Let me just hide. Yes, one second. I'm just hiding the uh, patterns. So look at this. Okay, let me just try to send this to the back. Okay, it's not going to the back, no problem. Okay, so let me just try to draw the line over it. Okay, so this is my high because you have price pushing down. It creates a low, it bounces back to the upside. So this is my low. Once price pushes down, I know that this is my high. Okay, so this is how I'm looking at my correction. I got my low, I got my high. Price makes one, two, three. It breaks my low. When it breaks the low, it turns back, comes up, breaks the high again, 
Can someone tell me what potential pattern formation this is? Wow, Bella said expanding flat. She says she's not sure, but she's correct. <laughs> it is an expanded flat formation. Okay, so expanded flat, expanding flat. Yes, same thing. It's an expanded flat formation. That's a very good observation. So it's by being able to identify these types of corrective formations that you can predict what is going to happen in the market next. Okay. So let's go back. So if this is an expanded flat formation, how would I draw this on my chart? I can also use an ABC, right? So I can say this is A, I can say this is B, and I can say this is C when it completes, okay? Let me just change the color like this, right? Now, what do you see here? You see A, B, C, and you also see A, B, C. It's the same pattern repeating itself. It's just shaped a little different. And that's why we can call them a flat formation. That's why we can call it ABC. That's why we can call them by various names, just simply because of how they are shaped. But the main thing that you need to understand is that price action is built off of five waves and three waves, okay? So price action built off of five waves, you're looking at an impulse move. And that is a strong five wave move. Price action built off of three waves would generally be a weaker corrective move. Okay. So whenever you find a weaker corrective move, you can be looking at a correction. And if the price breaks this high, then you know that it is possibly that this move is not part of a correction, but it is part of an impulse, which is one, two, and three. I'm just gonna try to draw this again. We look at this as ABC as well. We got one, we got two, we got three. Let's change the color. Let's put this one in pink. Okay, so it could also be one, two, three, and this marks the push to the upside. Now, another thing that can help us identify what's happening here is if we just simply just, just go back, just make the candles smaller and look at, look at how the price is moving. If you guys look at this, what do you see here? I'm just gonna use a three wave ABC to outline this, okay? If we look at this, you can see this is A, but one, two, three, you gotta push down, okay? So this could be A, B, this could be C right here, okay? This is one three wave corrective move. Then we can look at this here, A, B, C, just change your color. That's another three wave corrective move. And then we get a strong push to the downside. Okay. So this could be three, three, five. And what does that make? It makes an ABC move. So it could be A, then you get B, then you get C. And let's change your color so you guys can see this. And this is how the market is constructed in three waves and five waves. You just need to understand that the combination of these waves. After this corrective formation is complete, the price starts to move back to the upside. Okay. Now this move to the upside, if you look at it, you can see this move is weak. This move is not very strong, right? So this could be one wave, this B, this uh, big blue three wave move could now be one entire wave, which means that I'm going to take off 
these smaller waves and I'm only gonna leave on the big blue one. So this is just one corrective wave to the downside. Now you're getting a correction of that corrective wave. Now, since this corrective wave is a stronger wave, we will look at this as impulsive corrective. The price starts to correct this wave. It breaks the high. And because it breaks the high, and we know this is a correction, we also know this is a correction to the upside because of the nature of this wave. It is very messy moving to the upside. So we can safely say that we can expect another push to the downside, okay? Because the price moves in three waves and five waves. And for this one, let's use WXY. So this could be W and then this could be X and this wave coming down could be Y ending here or this could be pushing back to this low. Okay, coming like this, one, two, three. So this harmonic pattern that we had on could be pushing down again to complete this X, Y wave, okay? How would we know if it's not going to complete this X, Y wave? If it breaks the high, that would mean that the wave is completed here because it's already one, two, three. Okay, if I just type this again. It's already one, two, three. So that wave could be complete. Let me just take this off. Take that off just to make it a bit more clean. So this pink ABC move could complete this Y and we could move to the upside. If it is not completed to complete this WXY move, making this a running flat formation, remember we mentioned this before, where the price comes down, it moves up, it breaks the high, it comes down, it does not break the low and then it goes back to the upside. So let's make this bigger. Let's put the harmonic pattern back on. Okay, so how would I know what's potentially going to happen here? Okay, now what I wanna see is the price go sideways. Why do I want to see the price go sideways? Because this is an impulse, right? This is an impulse to the upside and the price starts to go sideways. However, this looks like one, two, and three, which could mean it's an ABC move where you have a long wave, you have a correction, then you have a short wave. And this short wave we also look at it and we call it a truncated wave. A truncated wave is a short wave, okay? Sometimes it barely breaks the high. As you can see here, it barely comes, breaks the high and it dies off. So we call it a truncated wave, okay? So after this truncated wave, what I wanna see is something that looks more like, let me just, put this in that color, you know, one, two, three, like that. If I get price making this type of price action, then I will be excited to look for price continuing to the upside, okay? Any questions so far? All right, I see. All right, but it's the same pattern, just bearish. Anyone else? Anyone else has any comments? No one else? I see Norwood says, 
Does that mean that the pattern failed? Okay, that's another good observation. Do patterns fail? Okay. In my book, price action does not fail. Because if you understand the way how price action works, you would know that the price action does not really fail. It just takes on a different formation. Okay, so for example, I showed you guys so many different possibilities that could be happening here. With you understanding the different possibilities that exist, let's take that off, good. So with you understanding the different possibilities that exist, for example, this is one, two, three, this could mean this is the start of an up move. So if the price goes sideways in this area, that would mean that the harmonic pattern is creating a correction. What harmonic patterns do is they create waves in the market. They create impulse waves and they create corrective waves. So they're part of the construction of price action. Okay, so if this harmonic pattern is creating a corrective wave, it is saying to you that we should be expecting another move like this to come over here like that at the end of this three wave correction. Now this three wave correction does not necessarily have to go flat like this. It can make a move that looks more like one, two, three, and then move back to the upside like that. Let's just take that off. So it could make a move like this, one, two, three, then move back to the upside. But as you can see, we have our profit targets here, these green lines. These are our profit targets for this pattern. So as price comes down, once it hits these profit targets, we will exit our trade, okay? Now, there are other things that we can look at when we wanna get into the market. We don't have to get into every single thing this evening. We can leave that for another class, okay? But just to have an understanding of price action and the Elliott wave, pattern formations would make a very big difference in your trading. You just simply need to be able to identify what type of price action you're getting on your chart, okay? Now, for a lot of traders, they would like everything to be simplified a bit more. So if you look at harmonic patterns, let's just try to take off everything else that I put on here. If you want to just look at simply just the harmonic pattern, this is a strong wave to the upside. Just looking at the harmonic pattern by itself. If I take off these, these lines that I drew here to represent the flat pattern, this would be a impulse move to the upside. It would be an impulsive corrective move simply because it's in three waves. You've got a long, strong wave, a correction, then a short wave, a truncated wave. So it's three waves, okay, A, B, C. So with this being an A, B, C move, it does not mean that the price has to reverse. It could mean that this is just one wave in a bigger corrective move, okay? So you can get, as I said, one, two, three, like this, completing this harmonic pattern formation profit targets. And then the price makes one more move to the upside. And we could see that that move in some cases could be equal to this one, or it could be a little shorter. Okay. We can see something that looks like that. 
and then the price drops again. Now, how can we expect something like this? This is a strong move down. If we look at previous price action connected to this move down, we don't see another move that matches this one. However, what we do see is this strong move down, correction of that strong move, then another strong move down. So this could be a completed expanded flat formation. And then we can expect something that looks like this. We can expect something that looks like this to come from this area. Complete at that point and then make a move down. Why? Because this is one, two, three. So this is expected to be a three wave move to the upside. So it's very likely that this harmonic pattern does not push price back to the downside. Okay. If it does happen, we need to see price push down, give us a correction, then push down again. And based on how strong the move comes, we will know if this move up is a truncated wave. Okay. Because it's clear to see that this is one, two, three, this could be a completed expanded flat formation, which means that is the correction of this move to the upside. Then we get one more move to the upside. This is only half of it. So I would expect that price would go into some sort of correction here and push up again. Now, since we're now touching on that, we need to look at the sessions that we're trading. A lot of us, we want to jump into the market at any time. No, we can't just jump into the market at any time. We need to understand where there's going to be big movements in the market. Remember, the market has a lot to do with psychology. It has a lot to do with the reality of things people do. Okay. So can someone tell me, what time do you get involved in the market? Let me just go to the chat box. Tell me guys, what time do you get involved in the market? Anyone? Brenda says nine. So I'll take the nine as US session. You get in nine Eastern Standard. Kevin says, let me see here. Kevin says New York session. Brenda says 9 a.m. Um, Ada says London time. Uh, Norwood says whenever <laughs> I'm looking at the screen. I used to be like that. <laughs> Whenever I look at the screen, I'm looking for an entry, but no, it doesn't work that way. Okay. So Charles says London session. Mark says London session, London session, London session. Okay. So I see a lot of London sessions here. Okay. And some New York sessions. These are both very good times to get into the market. Okay, very, very good times to get into the market. But when you look at the London session or you look at the New York session, are you getting involved during the session or are you looking to get involved at the start of the session? And when are you looking to exit? Are you exiting um, in the middle of the session, at the end of the session, at any time? When do you look for your exits? So I know now when you guys trade, you guys trade in the London session and the US session. These are two of the best times to be involved in the market. But exactly when are you looking for your entries? Are you looking for your entries? What time? Okay, I see here. 
Mark says, get out midway through the session before they slow down. Okay, good answer. Uh, Bella says, before the session opens, I'll assume that's what you mean, Bella, before it opens, meaning before the session opens. Um, Kevin says, I exit after my, tar my trade hits take profit. Okay. So having a take profit set is good. But sometimes the time to exit may come before your take profit gets hit and you see the market go against you, taking back the profit that you made. I'm sure you see that happen, Kevin. Am I correct? Brenda says, enter 9 a.m., out 12 noon. That's nice. That's very nice to know. Brenda enters at 9 a.m. and out by 12 noon. That's very good. I like that. Okay. Uh, Mark says, I get in just after the open to see how it moves that day. That's also a good observation. That's good. Bella says, I like Brenda's style. <laughs> I like her style too. That's very good. <laughs> uh, Kevin says, yes, but I'm trailing stops. Okay. Trailing stops is good. I don't, I don't really like to trail stops, but trailing stops is, is a good practice. Okay. I just don't really like trailing stops because it has a lot of, it has a lot of technicalities to it in terms of you may trail your stop and the market pulls back only to hit your stop and continue going in your direction. So trailing stops could work in your favor in some cases, in other cases, it could work against you. Okay, so that's one of the reasons why I don't like to trail my stops. So I prefer to have sniper entries and I prefer to have sniper exits in the market. Okay, and I'll show you guys how we do that. Um, Norwood says, I like to look for entries in the US session when the London session starts, um, start to close. Okay, okay, so that's still good. You're looking at entries so that you can get into the US session when the London session closes. Okay, that's good too. Um, Bella says, uh, will you teach us? Okay, um, of course, Bella, I will teach you guys to find some sniper entries. So that's what this course is all about. <laughs> all right, so let's go back to our chart. So when are we looking at getting involved in the market? Now we're approaching, we're approaching the end of this evening's class, but I will still try to sneak some more information in for you, okay? So we touched on the Elliott Wave concept. We touched on the corrective pattern formations. I, I find that you guys kind of got a grip of the pattern formations very quickly. You guys may be more experienced than I thought. <laughs> okay, so that's good. All right, now, the best times to enter and exit trades. Now, we all know that the markets no matter whether it's Forex, stocks, commodities, or otherwise, it doesn't really matter. They all have a start time and an end time. Now, the time that a lot of us overlook is lunchtime. Lunchtime is also a very important time. Just like the session start time is important, lunchtime is also important. It's normally at the middle of the session. In Eastern Standard, we're looking at 12 noon, okay? Now, as day traders, we need to pay attention to the market start times, lunch times, and end times. So the session start, the session lunch time, and the session end times, okay? Now, the reason for this is these are psychological entry and exit times for big day traders. These are the times that they're getting into positions and out of positions, okay? Generally, when they come in to the start of a session, they are looking to come into the market. So they're gonna pick a direction and they're gonna go in. At lunchtime, they're gonna come out of the market. 
When they return from lunch, they're going to go into another position or continue in the previous direction that they were trading. Okay, but generally at lunchtime, they could make a different decision and go in the opposite direction. All right, so bear that in mind. Now, the times we will focus on are the Euro session start, which is at 2 to 3 a.m. Eastern Standard. So that's generally when we're going to look at the European markets, okay, whether it's London or whichever. So we're looking at the European session and we're looking at the start time of 2 to 3 a.m. Eastern Standard, okay? So around that time, we're generally going to have traders coming into the market. Now, something that you guys may not be aware of, and I mean, it's something that's very easy to understand because I'm sure some of you do it. So some traders from the US session don't start trading in the US, the US session. They actually start trading in the European session. So you have US traders that don't start their day off in the US session. They start their day off in the European session. And generally you would find those are the traders who go home at lunchtime in the US session. They're done for the day because they already had a long day, <laughs> okay? So keep that in mind. Don't you ever think that US traders only trade the US session? That would be a very incorrect way of thinking. But for some reason, most of us have been taught that that is just the way it is. It's not. US traders don't only trade the US session. They start trading in a lot of cases from the European session, okay? So keep that in mind. So you could find that in a lot of cases, the European session has more volume. It moves, it makes bigger moves, stronger moves than the US session, okay? It could fluctuate at times, but you will find generally that the market makes the biggest moves in the European session, especially on instruments related to the European session and US session. For example, the Euro dollar, US dollar pair, the pound, US dollar pair, and so on. Okay, so pairs related to the Euro session and the US session, you will generally see bigger moves starting from the European session into the midday of the US session. Okay. Now, we're looking at the Euro session start time, which is 2 to 3 a.m. Eastern Standard. We're looking at the Euro session lunch time, which is 5 to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard. We're also looking at the U.S. session start time, which is 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard. And we're looking at the U.S. session lunch time, which is 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. Okay? Now... There are times, these are times that we're gonna look for our entries and our exits when we're day trading. We're not looking at this as a swing trading type of entry and exit. We're looking at this from a day trader's point of view, okay? We're not looking at this from a swing trader's point of view. We're only looking at this from a day trader's point of view. My preference is day trading. I prefer to day trade in opposed to swing trading, okay? To me, I would say day trading is most accurate because we're not gonna get caught up in a lot of that swing up and down, up and down type move. We know that if we come into the market, we're coming to find laser sharp entries and exits. We're gonna come in, get what we came for and be done with the market looking forward to the next day, okay? We're not gonna come into the market and open a position and have it on for weeks upon weeks or days upon days. No, we're looking to get in and we're looking to get out with profit, okay? So what 
we're looking to do is we don't want to hold trades past 1 p.m. Eastern Standard, okay? Typically, the market tends to slow down around that time. What we want to do is just simply ride the waves and be done with the market. Volatility is a very important factor and we want to be involved in the market when it's most volatile. When I say when it's most volatile, what I mean is when we're getting the most movement in the market. Okay? All right. Let's see if we have any comments, any questions. All right, guys. Any comments, any questions? What do you guys think about that? All right. So Bella is saying, do you have any thoughts or tips for those who trade crypto? <laughs> Bella says, asking for a friend. <laughs> okay. The crypto market, it is a market that also follows the Elliott wave theory. It also follows harmonic pattern formations. However, the crypto market in a lot of cases, if it's right, like for, for example, right now it's bullish. So right now, since it's bullish, you will find any bearish pattern formation being defied. The crypto market is a little bit different from most other markets because it creates a lot of what we call X waves, which means you should be getting a impulse to the downside. But instead of getting that impulse, which is a strong move to the downside, you're going to get a corrective wave down and then the market continues to the upside. Okay, so that's generally when the market's moving in a very extended manner. It does not mean that it's going to continue going up all the time. It will become exhausted at some point because right now, in my opinion, the crypto market is in a bubble. Pretty much the same as the last time. The last time when price got up to around $20,000 and everyone was bullish and then all of a sudden, the price just collapsed aggressively, all the way back to 3,000 or so. I'm expecting something similar to that to happen. Okay, so you need to be very careful with the crypto market. What I would say is you get in on the bullish um, signals, you take your profit, you wait for another bullish signal, ride that wave, take out your profit, and so on, rinse and repeat, okay? I am not looking forward to, you know, investing a lot into the crypto market at this point because it's at a very high price and it has a long way down to go. It can fall very hard, very fast. So if you find yourself buying, investing, I should say, investing right now for the long term, I would say that you're taking some risk. So at this point, maybe day trading the crypto market might be the best option. Okay. All right. Um, Ada says, can you show us how to use trade finder to find those kind of trades on the Euro or US session? Okay. Let's go back to the trade finder. Okay, so for example, we have this trade finder signal is completing at around, um, let's call it four to five o'clock. Now I like looking at the uh, Forex market on the one hour time frame because I find that the one hour time frame is more accurate. The patterns on the one hour time frame are more defined. The patterns on the 15 minute time frame might give you more of a smaller move in terms of um, it may just be a small move inside of a correction. Whereas on the one hour time frame, you stand a better chance to catch the impulse. 
okay? If you look at various instruments based on the different time frames, you will see that the price action becomes cleaner and cleaner. Whereas when you drop down to the smaller time frames, you can find that the price action becomes messy. You will find many pattern formations that you can try to jump into and trade, but they're not generally moving very far. They're just going to create small moves. And then if you're not fast enough to get out or you don't have those laser type entries and exits, you're going to get caught. Okay, so the price will end up moving back against you. So this, the, the lower time frames, I would say best use for scalping. If you want a day trade, I would say the one hour time frame is the best time frame for that. Okay. So if you observe this situation, this entry is coming in at around 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. This is around the close of the U.S. session. Would I enter at this point? No, I would not. Why wouldn't I enter at this point? I won't enter at this point because I know that traders are coming out of the market at this time. We have Euro traders in here and we have traders from the US session in here as well. So Euro session traders are not really gonna be active at this time. US session traders are also not going to be very active at this time. So the market is going to start losing momentum. As you can see, these are all one hour candles. They're not going anywhere. It's just stagnant. Okay. And what happens to the market overnight? Generally overnight, you will see the price simply just, just going sideways like this. Am I right? Have you guys noticed this happening? Overnight, the price just goes sideways. Even if in some cases you may find that maybe it may go sideways, making small moves and trickling to the downside, but it's moving extremely slow. It's moving extremely slow. And when the price is moving extremely slow like that, what can happen is if you're selling, the market opens, it moves aggressive to the upside. Because remember, this impulse needs to repeat itself. So it's going to move aggressive to the upside. And if you're still short, you're going to get caught when the price goes against you. And this is also a reason why we need to have sniper entries along with sniper exits. Okay. So we don't want to be getting involved in the market around the end of the US session. We also don't want to be getting involved in the market at lunchtime. At lunchtime, that's when we want to get out. When I say lunchtime, I'm talking about the US session. At 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard, that's when you want to be out of the market. Yes, in some cases, there may be high impact news events coming out uh, throughout the later part of the US session. And that can also cause the price to move aggressively. But it does not happen very often. And in most cases, the market tends to slow down at 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. And it would be best that you do not get involved in trades at that time. Okay, so between 12 to 1, and at the end of the US session, it is best not to be involved. The earlier part of the US session is the best part. Okay. So let's see here. I'm just going to try to look for. Okay, this is 9 a.m. Okay, so this is 9 a.m. So this is 8 to 9 a.m. Let me just put a little arrow here. So right here. Let me just 
Let's, let's change the color of that. Not bright enough. Let's use yellow. Okay, green is good. Okay, so right here, it marks 9 a.m. Eastern Standard. It's between 8 and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard. And this is the open of the U.S. session, right? So with this being the open of the U.S. session, what happened? Can someone tell me what happened? <laughs> All right. I see here Bella says, uh, okay, not Bella. Daniel says, great info. Kevin says, learn something new tonight, thanks. You're most welcome, Kevin, most welcome. Um, Bella says, okay, I saw that comment already. Okay. Norwood says, is your RSI set to two? <laughs> yes, my RSI is set to two, but we'll get into that one in another class. Okay, <laughs> we'll get into that one in another class. Um, Kevin says, so if a trader lives in the US and wants to trade the European session, what does their schedule look like? <laughs> um, are they typically going to bed early in the evening, waking up before the session to trade? Um, I'm still trying to adjust my sleep. <laughs> All right. Okay. So if you want to trade the European session and you're from the, I mean, you live in the US session, meaning maybe New York or somewhere in Eastern Standard Time, then yeah, you're going to have to go to bed early. <laughs> so you're going to have to go to bed early so that you can wake up, you know, at least a little energized so that you can focus and look for these entries. However, by using the UOP FX trade finder, it simplifies the process a great deal for you. So there are so many different setups that you can find. All you need to do is look for setups that come in around the open of the session and setups that come in around the lunchtime in the session that's in the European session, then you're going to look for setups that come in around the open of the US session, and you're going to exit at lunchtime in the European, in the uh, US session. So whatever trades you're in, you need to be out by lunchtime. Any trades that you enter at the European session open, you can look for an exit at the European sessions lunchtime, which is 5 a.m. Eastern Standard. If you entered a trade at the European sessions lunchtime, which is 5 a.m. Eastern Standard to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard, you're gonna want to look for an exit around eight and nine a.m. Eastern Standard because that is the US market open and the direction of the market could change at that time. If you enter a trade in the US session, around the US session open, you need to exit at lunchtime because at lunchtime, almost everything just goes dead, okay? And in our other classes to come, I will show you guys what these exits should look like, okay? Let's continue going through the comments here. Bella says they shorted the market. Uh, so what Bella was talking about was what happened at the session open here at eight to nine a.m. Eastern Standard. So as you can see, yes, they did short the market at that time. Okay. And Norwood said market correction at resistance level. Also correct. Bella says they're selling instead of buying. Another good observation. Uh, Ada says uh, U.S. related pairs are more active during the U.S. session. Um, no, I wouldn't say that they're more active during the U.S. session. U.S. related pairs, yes, they're more active in the U.S. session, but 
a lot of the activity actually takes place in the, Euro, the uh, European session. So bear that in mind, it's like, if it doesn't happen in the European session, it's gonna happen in the US session. So it's between the US session and European session. That's where you have the most activity, okay? These are two of the best trading sessions. Even Asian peers move in the European and US session, okay? More than they move in the Asian session because there are more traders active in the European and US session. Um, let's see here. Um, it says, I'm in the UK. When should I be looking for entries and exits in the market? You're in the UK. You're looking for your entries around 2 to 3 a.m. Eastern Standard. You're looking for your exits around 5 a.m. Eastern Standard, 5 to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard. So that's when you're looking for your first exit, or you can be looking for an entry around that time as well. And you're definitely looking for your exits around 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard or 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. Definitely 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. You need to be out of whatever trades you're in. Okay? So between 12 and 1 p.m. Eastern Standard, you are definitely out of whatever trade you're in. All other positions that you're looking at, it all depends on when you enter. So if you enter at 2 to 3 a.m. Eastern Standard, then around 5 a.m. Eastern Standard, you're looking to see if you have a reason to exit. And I will get into the reasons to exit in our next class, okay? If you entered at 5 to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard, at 8 to 9, you're looking for a reason to exit. If you don't get a reason to exit, you can hold on to your trade, okay? If you enter at 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard, you're definitely going to exit at 12 to 1 Eastern Standard. So between that time, you will definitely close out your trade and be done for the day, okay? You're not going to look for entries at 12 to 1 Eastern Standard. When I say 12 to 1, I mean 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard, you're definitely not going to be looking for entries in the market because around that time, it will go dead. In most cases, it will go slow. <laughs> I see Norwood says, why does Asian session exist? It's a good question because it's so dead. But it's it's a market it's a market there are currencies from the asian session there are instruments from the asian session they they have to be traded so yeah the asian session does have to exist okay so other traders would trade in the asian session it all depends on you know whatever trading style they're looking at whatever strategies they're looking at but we as day traders, we want to capitalize on where the best movements are. And the best movements are in the European session and US session. Okay, so that's where we're going to focus our energy. Okay. All right. So we're going to wrap today's class up. And next Thursday, we're going to have the continuation. Okay. <laughs> Bella says, thank you. Great class. You're most welcome, Bella. You're most welcome. So next Thursday, we're going to continue this. All right. Today I had a 34, I think. Maybe around 34 of you guys here. I hope next time I can find more of you guys here. I can get some more questions. <laughs> All right. Um, Kevin says, thank you. Mark says, awesome. Uh, where are you from? I'm actually from South America, which is Guyana. I'm from Guyana in South America, but I currently live in the Caribbean. So I live in the sunny island of St. Lucia. <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm, I'm operating remotely. Uh, Daniel uh, Bella says, nice. Uh, Grace says, thank you. Daniel says, awesome. Thank you, thank you. Mark says, nice. Bella says, uh, living your best life. <laughs> Yes, the Caribbean is nice. Right now, we have an active volcano going off, though. <laughs> so there's ash everywhere. I, I'm not sure if you guys would have heard of that. There's an active volcano going off in St. Vincent, which is a neighboring island. So there's ash all over the Caribbean right now. Okay, Elaine says, uh, let me see here. Um, thank you for the training. Please check, uh, please check the speaking in the background. Sounds like a lovely area in the Caribbean. <laughs> the squeaking, oh, the squeaking. <laughs> yes, the Caribbean is a very noisy place in the evening. So um, Reginald and the other guys normally used to tease me before when I came on in the beginning of UOP. Uh, they used to say that I live in Wakanda. <laughs> so it's it's quite noisy out here. I know in the US, um, most places you guys don't hear anything in the evening, but we have a lot of, um, I don't know if to call it wildlife, <laughs> but we have a lot of stuff outside that make noises. Nothing to hurt you. <laughs> Bella says, please be careful. I'm assuming Bella is talking about the volcano. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cindy says, yes, praying for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Ada says, stay safe. Mark says, wow, didn't know that. Yes, we have an active volcano situation going on. But uh, by the grace of God, everything's going to be okay. Jonathan says, great session. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I'll see you guys on our next class. It was a lovely experience being back with you guys here at UOP after so long. I will see you guys on our next class. Bye-bye for now. Enjoy your evening, everyone.